Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listening to those amazing speakers tonight, last night, the previous night, it makes me think of my early retirement, my friends. <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an. Wa ala sayyidihim wa khatamihim, habibi ilahi al-alameen, abil qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن امرأة خافت من بعلها نشوزا أو إعراضا أو إعراضا فلا جناح عليهما أن يصلح بينهما صلحا والصلح خير صدق الله العلي العظيم one of the sad realities in our society today is an issue called divorce and separation in some families We have to address this issue. We have to speak about it and, and say, what does the Quran say about it? And find some solutions. Last year, I had a full lecture here, Ramadan 1438 on this podium, about the causes of divorce. What causes divorce? What precipitate divorce? I mentioned a few elements. Among them was incompatibility between the husband and the wife from the beginning. There was incompatibility. Maybe their color is the same, their culture is the same, their language is the same, but their ideas were not the same. Their goals were not the same. Their aspirations in this life was not the same. So it's very hard to bring two people together under one roof if they don't share the same goals, if they don't share the same perception about this life, why they are here, what is their duty, what is their responsibility. It's very hard. So this is one reason. The other reason is that young generation, when they get to know each other for the purpose of marriage, Unfortunately, they don't discuss their future life. They discuss wedding, but they don't discuss marriage. Sometimes they speak about the details of their wedding. How many people we're going to invite, where it is going to be, what is the dress, what is the gown, what is the food that we are serving, the flowers that we're going to have, the honeymoon that we're going to go to. They discuss these small details about the wedding, but they don't discuss about marriage, about marriage itself. What is my responsibility as a husband? How can I be committed to my family, to my wife, to my children for the rest of my life? Or what is her responsibility as a mother? They don't discuss this. They take it lightly. Therefore, once they get married, and they don't have road map, they don't look at their road map, they get in troubles. And the disagreements begins to creep in into their life. Another reason of marriage disintegration is the absence of healthy conversation and healthy dialogue. I always say that one of the major differentiation between humans and animals is that humans have been endowed with reason, with aql, with aql. So their speech is not just words. These are not just words because some animals, they have words. They can produce words, but they don't understand their meaning. Our speech is an intelligent speech. Ar-Rahman al-Qur'an 
خلق الإنسان علمه علمه what البيان بيان is an intelligent speech when you speak with people you have to incorporate intelligence your reason your عقل your knowledge so when this intelligence speech is missing and it becomes only emotional they try to put each others down they try to demean each other they try to win this argument he wants to win over her and she wants to win over him so the absence of healthy dialogue and conversation is one of the major reasons for divorce because nice talks is missing there is always tension always the moment they get together there is tension nobody thinks that i have to keep this institution even if my partner is wrong i should not correct his wrong or her wrong with another wrong the wrong is not corrected with another wrong the wrong should be corrected by something right something healthy something productive something wise so these are and many others of course they contribute nowadays materialism plays a role some people say why 50 years ago 70 years ago we never heard of divorce in our family in our town in our village but now divorce is very rampant one reason is materialism 50 years ago you never talked to any lady other than your honorable wife the only lady you saw is your wife nowadays you take you talk more to others than your wife you speak more with other women outside in your office in your school in your hospital in your more than you do with your wife so this is another reason definitely this is another reason so now <clears throat> If you want to know more about the causes of divorce, it's online. The lecture last year, I think it was in the 6th or 7th of Ramadan last year, 1438 Hijri. Now, I mentioned something last night here. That sometimes when divorce takes place, and this is the theme of tonight. The theme is not about divorce. The theme is about post-divorce. When divorce takes place, sometimes some husbands are reluctant to grant their wives the religious divorce. Even though they go to court and they file for legal divorce and the legal divorce is over, is finalized after one year, two years, three years. But some husbands, they are reluctant to grant their wives the religious divorce. They use this, the religious divorce, they use it against her to humiliate her, to, as they say, to give her a lesson, difficult, tough lesson. So they refuse. Though he has no relationship with her anymore, Maybe he goes and he remarries someone else. But he refuses to give his ex-wife the religious divorce to deprive her from remarrying. And this is what the Quran says. فَلَا تَذَرُوهَا كَالْمُعَلَّقَةِ Don't leave her hanging in the air. She doesn't know whether she's married or she's divorced. She doesn't know about her faith. Don't do that. And this happens. This happens. I am witness to this. I receive calls from many women who are divorced. And she says, my husband is, is, he doesn't want to speak about this. We've been separated for seven years. <laughs> In some cases, 10 years. And he doesn't want to respond to me. He doesn't even answer my calls. And I need to know my future. I need to know my fate. I can't remarry. Some of them says, not because I want to remarry. I want to get my, 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 my freedom, my freedom, my dignity. I don't want to be connected to him for the rest of my life. And she's right. She's right. When legal divorce is done, it has to be followed by religious divorce in the same day. 
in the same hour. There should be no delay in that. So what do we do with this? Let me tell you. The legal system that we have in Islam, it needs to be updated. It's an outdated system. The system of divorce that we have in Islam, it works for villages of 200 years ago, not America or Europe or advanced human societies. It's not working anymore. So they go to the mosque and they say to the Imam, the Sheikh, the Sayyid, the Mawlana, please, I have a problem. The answer of the Imam is, where is your ex-husband? I don't know where is he. Or he's there, but he doesn't want to come. He doesn't want to, to help me in this. The Imam is going to say, I can't do anything to you. Sorry. I have no legal power. Because as we, as marriage requires both sides to be present, divorce also requires both sides, both parties to be present. It has to be mutual. If it is not a mutual, then it is too complicated. And sometimes they tell them, send your case to this country and that country, to this marja and that marja. And the case goes there and you never hear about it. It's gone forever. And this is not good. This is not healthy. So what should we do? And in this case, you know, when a lady, she does not get her freedom from her ex-husband who did so much pain to her, she's going to suffer more psychologically, socially, financially. Her case is going to deteriorate. Now, let me say something about women and then I'm going to turn against men soon. So bear with me, sisters. In some cases, when a lady comes and she claims, I don't know about the whereabouts of my ex, she's not telling us the truth. She knows about his whereabout, but because she doesn't want to talk to him. And I discover in certain cases that she did not even try to speak to him in the first place. She didn't try to approach him. She did not try to even call him and tell him, hey, I want you to get me the religious divorce. She never, because of stubbornness, because of sometimes arrogance, because the relationship with him was very sore. So she doesn't want to see his face anymore. In that case, we cannot help. In that case, I tell them, if you need to get your religious divorce, it's important for you, you have to give some concessions. You have to call him and tell him to give us permission to get your divorce done. But then, in other or, or in certain cases, this is another scenario, and bear with me, please. Please bear with me. I'll be just to both sides. I'll try to be just. In some cases, few cases I should say, we find out later on, of course, when we investigate, that the wife took 50% of her ex-husband's property or estate. Sometimes she, she takes his house from him, his cash money from him his business away from him, and she takes the kids away from him, and now she says, give me divorce. Give me religious divorce because I don't like your face. Or sometimes she has another relationship. While she was still married to him, she develops another relationship with someone else for a few months, sometimes a few years, and she wants to strip her husband from all his money and then she wa she wants him to say yes yes lady i'm going to give you my money i'm going to give you your divorce and i am your slave that does not happen this is of course in a few cases not with all women with certain nationalities i'm not going to mention them for the sake of month of ramadan now we come one the husband is an aggressor and the wife is a victim. One case or many cases I find out that the husband says to his wife, 
I don't ev even believe in God. I don't believe in Islam. I don't believe in religious divorce. Get lost. I'm not going to come to the mosque because I'm not a Muslim. We did the American divorce and that's, that's it. So I don't believe in the religious divorce. So when we find out that he has a problem not with his wife, with God and with the whole community and whole religion, then definitely we're going to grant her divorce. Of course, it takes time to investigate these cases. It takes time because you need to listen to both sides. You need to listen to both sides. I said many times that one thing I really learned here from my experience, that I would never judge or issue my opinion over any, anything unless I listen to both parties. It's very important to listen to both parties. I can't, I can't even comment on any problem, on any issue, on any divorce, unless I listen to the husband and the wife. This is a lesson that I learned while serving Islam. You must hear both sides. And then you would be able to judge after that. And sometimes you need to, to listen to witnesses from both sides sides too. So this is one case. The husband does not believe in religious divorce. In that case, we're going to grant her religious divorce immediately, even if the husband does not like it. Okay? In other cases, the husband is religious. He upholds his religious duties. He comes to the mosque. He prays. He fasts. He does this. He does that. But he wants to punish his wife. It's a sense of revenge. He wants to put her down. Why? Because she's divorcing him. If we realize that this is the case, he's not interested in going back to her. No, because he's already remarried. And sometimes he has children from his second marriage. But he wants to punish his wife as a punishment. He wants her to suffer. He enjoys seeing his ex-wife suffering. Again, in this case, we will grant her divorce even if he rejects that. We grant her divorce. We get a permission from al-hakim al-shari. al-taqlid. Because this is based on aggression, zulm, injustice. And God does not love injustice. God says when you find someone is mazloom being wronged, you have to help him, you have to help her. So in this case, definitely we're going to grant her divorce. You know, in some cases I found out that the wife left everything for her husband, everything. She didn't get any penny. She, she went, she left the house only with her clothing. She didn't take no money, no nothing. Even her dowry, he didn't give her her dowry, her mahr. He didn't give it to her. She walks out of, out of the house barefoot and still he doesn't want to give her divorce. This is barbarism. This is savagery. This is immorality. This is aggression. This is injustice. And we don't tolerate injustice. We should not tolerate injustice. This is why I tell my friends, the imams, the maulanas, the leaders of Islamic society, when you find out that there is aggression, there is hate, hatred, then you have to grant them divorce. Don't wait for a phone call to come from you from this or that. God has given you reason. Reason, aql. Incorporate your reason. Incorporate your conscience. Try to help. Try to help. God does not like violation. He doesn't like. Listen to what the Quran says about this case, where the husband is reluctant to give his wife divorce because he wants to punish her. What does he say in Surah Al-Talaq? We have a whole chapter in the Quran, chapter 65. It's called Al-Talaq, divorce. But subhanAllah, this chapter that speaks about divorce, if you examine it, Go back tonight home and read this chapter. It's full of optimism. It is full of hope. It is full of encouragement. 
speaks about tawakkul, put your trust in God. Put your faith in God. God is going to help you. God, God is going, God is going to get you out of this problem. It's full of hope, this chapter 65. Some people call it the chapter of optimism. They change divorce into optimism and faith in God. Check it out tonight when you go home. Chapter 65, Surah Al-Talaq, full of hope, full of encouragement from God. So in this chapter, God says, فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنْ When divorce is done, let's say divorce is done today, God forbids. Inshallah, you stay with your wives from now until the day of judgment, inshallah, and past the day of judgment into paradise, inshallah. You are stuck with them even in the next life, inshallah. <laughs> so, one of the speakers says, one day I was saying on the member that those good mu'mineen people in this life, God is going to gather them with their wives in the akhirah. He says, one man, he stood and he left. <laughs> so I saw him. The following day in the market, I said, why did you leave? He said, say it, it's not enough here in this life, 50 years, you want me to be with her? So Allah says, فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَا أَجَلَهُنْ When divorce is done, there is a waiting period, idda, three cycles, three ministerial cycles. So if the divorce is done today, they wait for the first cycle, second cycle, by the time they see the blood of the third cycle, divorce is finalized. Before that, they can go back to each other without act, without a new marriage, without a new nikah. Automatically, if he says to her, I'm interested in coming back to you, they can go back to each other. But if the third cycle appears and they did not go back, then if they want to go back, they have to do new nikah, new marriage ceremony, new nikah. So this waiting period is for what? For them to think. Maybe because it was a moment of anger, a moment of, you know, whatever. Shaitan comes in and destroys their life. So they have enough time to reflect on their future, especially when kids are involved. Sometimes the divorce, there, there are no kids. They go on their ways, different ways. But when they have one, two, three, four, five, in one case, I told you that the guy was here the other night. They have seven kids. Seven kids. This is a, a kindergarten, you know. And they want to get divorced in this country. So Allah says, wait. Reflect. Don't be selfish. You are responsible. Don't destroy the life of entire generation. I'm going to hold you accountable tomorrow. I'm going to charge you. I'm going to punish you. So be careful. So Islam gives time for both of them to reflect. So Allah says, فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنْ فَأَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ Either take them back honorably بِمَعْرُوف Not violently, not going back to the same old story, you know, always rift, always arguments, always fightings, always, you know, no. Bima'roof, restore your life again in an honorable way. Oh, if no, you decide we are not for each other. We can't. We can't. Aw fariquhunna bima'roof. Fa'amsikuhunna, either hold them back, bring them back into marriage, or separate from them. Again, look at the Quran. Even if there is divorce or separation, it has to be how? Bima'roof, honorably, in a nice way. Because she's a human being. One day she was your wife. One day she was your sweetheart. She was your girlfriend. You loved her. Remember the good times you shared with each other. And now you have kids. Both of you, you share those kids. You still need to see her. Because of your kids, you, you, you still need to be friends. Even if marriage ends, friendship should not end. Respect should not end. فَأَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ فَارِقُهُنَّ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ فَارِقُهُنَّ سَرِّحُهُنَّ another verse 
and this and Surat Al-Talaq, Fariquhun. So Islam says, be human, even at the time of disagreement with your partner. Leave room for negotiation. Leave room for a friendship. Leave room for a humanity. For a humanity. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace to our life and our families, inshallah. Especially during this month, the month of Ramadan, we need to be more peaceful, not just with God. See, when we hear these beautiful du'as, du'a al-iftitah, du'a after tomorrow, inshallah, on Sunday, we begin du'a Abu Hamza, Abi Hamza al-Thamal, du'a Joshan al-Kabir, beautiful words with God. Beautiful, romantic. These are romantic chattings and discourse with God. So if you want to establish peace with God, you definitely need to establish peace with yourself and your wife and your family and your children. We need this peace. Nothing is more beautiful than the house, a house being built on piety, on righteousness. Ala taqwa. When the husband, he fears God, the wife, they, she fears God. They work for their akhirah. They work for the betterment of their families and their children. They have no grudge in their heart. They have no animosity. Even if they don't get along, they decide we don't get along. So let's part from each other in a civil way, in an Islamic way, in a moral way. Inshallah, we see strong families, especially with the young generation. Those who are still not married, they listen to these lectures, they reflect upon them, inshallah, to build healthy, strong, productive, Families, Allahumma khfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat taqabbal salatana wa siyamana wa du'aana wa ta'atana fi hadha al-shahr al-azim wafiqna lil-ibadah wa lil-tawbah fi layali al-qadr ya arham al-rahimin wa ajjil fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al-asri wa al-zaman وإله أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد